Hi everyone, it is Friday and it's time for class. Who do we have today? Hi everybody. How's everybody doing today? Are we good? Hi, how are we? Hi Lynn, hi Emer. Hi Louise. Hi Stephen, who else do we have? Hi Neve and Anna. Hi Julie. Hi everybody, we have a massive class today. How is everybody doing? Good. We good? Yeah. Hi Julie, welcome. What are we making today? We are painting today. That was what I was going to say to you. I think that Leah may have forgot to tell you we're painting. I'm not sure. Well, if you told me that, I wouldn't be wearing my favourite t-shirt. That's very good. <laughs> good point, good point. Okay, right, we're painting. So what I'm going to do is the first thing we're going to need is water and our paints okay so they're the first two things we're going to need so you might open up some paints and um, you don't have to open all of them but um i'm going to do a good few nice bright colors so i'm going to open some of mine up and have them here what Why are we even making? oh i will show you now in a second so we're going to do our paints we're going to open up our paints they're the first things we're going to open up and then we are going to um get painting and getting get doing stuff so um what we're going to do is we're getting our paints out getting our aprons on first and all that kind of stuff what you're going to need is your water your sponges so your two sponges and your paints and a paintbrush as well okay so we're going to need a paintbrush too okay all right there are the first things we're going to need and then we're going to need your glue, your scissors, so the same things we need every week, and your markers as well. We might need some markers. So your markers, your glue, your scissors, a paintbrush, your sponges that are in your packs, uh, water, and your paints are the first things that we are going to need, okay? So they're the first things we're going to need. Um, if you have a pencil at home, it would be handy for later. Now, you don't need a pencil, but if you had one, that might be handy for later. So if you have one from school, maybe I'm just going to pair mine because it's very, hasn't been used yet. Very new pencil. And we are going to need one sheet of white paper and one sheet of black card. So this is what we're using today. Okay, now. This painting can be quite messy. So I would advise your mum or dad maybe to put down some newspaper underneath your uh, painting or um, maybe a tablecloth that you can wipe down or something like that would be good because it can be a bit messy, this one, okay? So uh, we're gonna need, I'm gonna go over that again, your paints, your water, your paintbrush, your sponges, your glue, your scissors, your markers, um, some water, a white sheet of paper, a black sheet of card, and a, maybe some newspaper to go underneath you and an apron. I forgot my apron. It's in the wash. I forgot to take it out. So I'm just going to try and not be as messy as I normally am with paint today. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do today, we're, we're doing sponge painting. So we're going to do these really cool pieces of art um, which are all done with um, sponges, okay? So you can kind of see if we do it up close here, you can kind of see that one color blends into the other and that effect comes from using a sponge. Or if you see here with the waves, if you twist it a different way, you get the nice splash effect. So that's what I'm gonna teach you how to do today. And you will choose what kind of building or what kind of item that you will do um, the black on the black paper, okay? So I've done, there's two um, of these lovely lighthouses that I've done. Um, there's also uh, a castle or a haunted house that we did earlier in the week. And I think my son did a really quick um, cherry blossom tree as well. So you could do anything you like really out of the black paper. I know that one of the girls earlier in the week did um, a black cat. And then she, what she did is cut out the eyes. So it made it look like the lovely color on the paint was coming through in the cat's eyes. Um, there was somebody else and they just did a big bat. And they did the same thing with the eyes. They cut out the eyes and the mouth of the bat so they had that lovely colour coming through. So I don't mind what kind of a building or what kind of a creature you do from the black card. The main thing to do to learn today is how to sponge paint. Um, and it's a really cool thing to learn because you can really paint with anything. 
You can paint with plastic bags, you can paint with uh, brown paper bags, you can paint with forks and knives and spatulas and um, the ends of bottles. We'll talk about all of that once we get started with the painting. Right, um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take your white piece of paper and pop it down on the table in front of you. Painting with knives is a good idea. Well, it, it, plastic ones are okay. <laughs> the backs of plastic ones you can use as straight lines or the handles of fancy ones. Okay, so we're going to start with your white paper. We're going to pop it down on the table in front of you, okay? Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to choose in your head what colour paints you think you might want to use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make another one of my lovely um, lighthouses. So you can do the same as me if you want, or you I could do something this different. Is a little bit bad. You don't like this one? No, our internet is a bit bad. Is it? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I, I think you we lost your signal two weeks ago, I think. It's okay though. You can catch up on the video if you miss anything, okay? So this is the one I'm going to make today. Okay, so the colours I'm going to use are yellow, orange, pink, red and blue. Okay, and maybe a little bit of white as well. So the first thing I'm going to do before we use any of the sponges, before we use any of the paint, is I'm going to choose the colours that I want to use. And what I'm going to do is a really handy little knack. I'm going to take the lid and pour some of the colour I want to use into its lid. And the reason why we do that, it's much easier to get the sponge into a lid than it is into the tub of paint. Okay. So you don't need too much. You can always add more if you want it. Um, it's easier to add some rather than pour too much in. So I've just kind of done a bit of a blob here. A little, little about that much. A little blob of paint. Can you see? Okay. So I've done some blue for the water. I've done some red. I'm going to do some yellow next here as well. And I might do some orange and pink as well. Okay. So there's my lovely, um, my lovely kind of sunset behind I'm my... trouble opening the lid. Are you? Maybe your mum could help you out there. Foil. Yeah, the foil is a bit difficult to use. All right. And actually, my orange paint is gone from this tub, so I'm going to have to use it from another tub. Um, so I'm going to have the same problem as you, Julie, trying to get the foil off the new paints. Um, if the worst comes to the worst, you can always make a hole in it with your scissors and just use that. So that's what I'm going to do. Just make a hole with my scissors. I did that once, but then it ended up bad because I got paint all over my scissors. Uh-oh, did you? Well, you can clean your scissors. It was too hard on the foil because it was really hard and then the whole entire metal thing went into the tub. Oh, did it? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just did it carefully there now, so I'm pouring some orange paint into my orange lid as well. So I've got, now I've poured some orange in, I've poured some yellow in, I've poured red, I've poured blue, and I'm gonna do some pink I've next. Pink in and that's all I've poured in. Yeah, I'm gonna do some pink next now, and that's what I'm going to do, okay? So that's the very, very first thing we're going to do is pour some of those paints in. Um, So we have them ready to go, because as I said, it's much easier to get the sponge into the lid rather than into the massive tub okay because it's round and fat and it's not going to fit in the tub uh, like a paintbrush would okay um how is everyone getting on have we all got our paints poured there we i'm good? not going we're, to we're... use blue i'm just going to do like a sunset brilliant yeah that's perfect so you can use as many colors as you want or as little as you like okay um so what we're going to do is you start at the top with the lightest color okay and the reason why we do that is because if we get a little bit of, of a darker color up here and it runs into the lighter colors, it doesn't look great. So you start with the top and you start with the lighter color at the top and then we'll blend everything in, okay? So all we're going to do is squeeze your, your little um, sponge a little bit and I'm gonna dip it into my yellow like this, just one edge, okay? Now, if you do this correctly, you get lots of colors on one sponge. So you can see here, look, I'm on the one I used yesterday. I've got orange, on one side, I've got pink here, I've got red here, and then I used my other one for the blacks and the blues. So you can get a good couple, um, good couple of colors on one sponge. Like this. Yeah, that's it. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna dab, dab, dab across the top of the page, okay? So I've dabbed, just dab, 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 okay? And we don't really need much more paint than that because we're just gonna keep dabbing until we cover the whole area in yellow, okay? So you can, you can add more paint later, but we kind of want to be a bit mean with the paint, like always, so um, it, it dries faster, okay? So I'm just 
I'm not doing that part yet. I'm still doing my paint. That's okay, Julie. You can catch up. Don't worry. We'll be, we'll be doing this bit for a while, okay? So um, what I've done is I've just dabbed across the top. And you can see I didn't dip my uh, sponge in more paint. I just kept dabbing in the holes and to spread out the paint a little bit, okay? And I'm going to go a little bit more yellow because I love the colour yellow. So I'm just going to do that one more time. So I've dipped it into my paint and I'm dabbing right across the top like that, okay? And you can see it, it makes this lovely kind of dappled effect. So that would be lovely if you were doing a tree, to have the sun coming through the trees like that. Um, it would be lovely, okay? And the reason why we're using the sponge is to, it's a nice way of blending all of the different colours together, okay? Like that, it really is. Yeah, brilliant, well done. That's perfect, Emer. well done. Okay, so I did kind of two rows of, of yellow here, all right? And I've kind of dabbed the, the uh, sponge in between the two rows to blend them together. So it looks like just one big row of yellow. Well done, Lynn, that's perfect, yeah. Okay. Now, as we're moving down the page, we're going to get a little bit darker each time. And the next colour I'm going to use is orange, because that's kind of the next uh, colour really in the spectrum, okay? And it does, you can use the same sponge. I'm just going to move over a little bit and use this bit for, yeah, orange. Now, this is why it gets messy on your hands, okay? So if you do have a bit of tissue handy, that's okay. I'm just going to wait till I'm finished to wash my hands, okay? So I'm just going to move over next to my orange and I'm going to dip 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 into the orange now next to my yellow and I'm just going to dab do the same thing again right up against my yellow and you can kind of see here so it's blending in already okay and I'm just going to blend it in a bit more okay so you can go over the line so you, the, the, the aim here is not to have a straight line of any color because nature isn't really straight lines um, it kind of blurs into all the different colours together, blends in, and I think it, that's what makes it really, really beautiful. Okay, so you can see now, but just by dab, dab, dabbing that sponge, I've blended one into the other. So it looks like the yellow was kind of running into the orange colour there. Okay, and I think I need a bit more orange again. And it's okay to go up a bit onto the yellow as well. It gives it a nice kind of another effect. Okay, so I've gone up into my yellow. And you can kind of see there, it's really blended in very well, okay? It's nice, isn't it? Okay, so as I was saying, um, you can use plastic bags to paint with. Um, and the plastic bags kind of give a nice effect like this, but a, a bit rougher. So if you were doing rocks, if you're painting rocks, what I would do would be dip my um, a plastic bag into some grey and just kind of dab, dab, dab. And it gives all these sharp effects. And it's not as soft and fluffy looking as a sponge. And that's actually how they paint stage scenery, you know, for pantomimes and stuff. We use things like plastic bags, big plastic bags in our hands like this. We use our hands. Uh, we just pour paint on something. You use your hand, your whole hand as a paintbrush. We use mops for the massive pieces of scenery. You can use a mop to make it look like a tree. Um, toothbrushes, anything at all you can use to paint with. Obviously, use an old toothbrush, not a new toothbrush. Um, but there's lots of things you can paint with and you can really experiment with paint at home if you have kind of leftover um, barbecue cutlery, you know, those wooden forks or plastic forks, you could use those. Um, I think some of you might have seen the fluffy chickens video that we have on YouTube. And um, we made little fluffy yeah. Easter chicks um, and, and stuff like that. So you can read, there's a lot of things you can paint with. Um, and when you're in the theater, like, like I am, I learned how to paint a lot of things for the stage. I've learned a lot of little tricks about how to make things look really sharp or really fluffy and stuff like that so this is one of the reasons i wanted to do sponge painting with you guys okay so i've done my orange and i've done my yellow and i'm going to move into my pink now okay i'm just going to move around my sponge and use a different little section okay well done well done emer that's perfect yep really nice guys okay so you're doing a great job this takes a lot of practice so the pink one i find is is uh isn't as doesn't spread as well as my other colors. So I'm gonna to have to dip a few times, I think, for this one. And you can already see it looks really, really pretty already, look. Okay. So my advice is to be a little bit mean with the paint, like always, because we um we don't want it to be uh, too wet to do other things with later, okay? And this with this as well, if you splash one color into another by accident, that's okay too, because that's, 
the way nature is, okay? So I spilled a little bit of my pink on my orange and I don't really mind, look, because it looks pretty, okay? So like that. So there's a bit more pink up here and I don't mind that. Okay. Well done, guys. How are we getting on? Are we good? How many rows and how many colors have we done? Three, three, three. We're flying it. How are you getting on, Julie? I've done one bit. I'm starting my second one and I'm not able to put enough. That's okay. You can just make that little hole and pour some in, okay? Take take your time. Stephen, how are you getting on? You good? How many rows have you got done with your paints? I'm like you're on your fourth. You're flying it. Lynn is three done. Louise, how many have you got done? Three and Emer has as well. I'm going to move on to my fourth one. So because a lot of you are at the same speed as me, I'm going to move on and use red now as well. And I'm still using the same sponge. I'm just using a different section of it. OK, so look, I've got yellow, red, orange and pink. All right. Um, and how you wash your uh, your sponges afterwards is you just pop them in the sink in the bathroom in some water and you just squeeze out the paint with your hands now it's messy but i actually think it's fun because i feel like um i'm making some sort of a potion when i'm doing it because when you squeeze it all the different colors come out it's a bit of a mess but it's the easiest way to do it and then you let them dry um a, on a piece of kitchen roll in the bathroom or in the sun and um, because the weather is nice at the moment so you could let them you totally let them dry in the sun um, and that will be cool, all right? Because we'll be using these again in two weeks time to do another piece of artwork. And I bet you by the time we go to use it a second time, you guys will be experts at sponge painting, okay? Well done, guys. So I've done my four colors now. I've done quite a lot of red, but I don't mind that. So I've got red, yellow, orange, and a uh, pink on mine, okay? Um, so that's my four colors. Now I'm going to do mine um, as the C, okay? I'm going to show you another little trick. So I'm going to move on to blue next. Now, the thing with um, the C is you'll see on this one that I did earlier, um, it kind of looks like it's splashing or it's waves. It's splashing like that. I'm just going to give a little hint on that, okay? So how we do that effect is you do the same thing. You dip in your, your sponge into the paint when you when you dab you leave the uh sponge there and twist so dab twist dab twist if you want a full circle you're going to do all the way around but if you only want kind of a, a splash you kind of twist halfway like this and i'm going to show you on this one okay so i'm going to just dip into my blue okay and um, i'm going to just do one there and you'll see what i mean okay so what i did was i dabbed and i twisted dab twisted i'm making the same one as i did the last day so i'm going to make one of these so it's a lighthouse on the cliffs okay and i'm doing splashes up around the side of the lighthouse so and when you're using the sponge or the same one i'm doing the same i'm using the same sponge look now you can use a different one if you want that's completely up to you all right i'm just using one because i think i can get all of it done in one and I'm going to do my waves like that, my dab and twist, dab and twist like that. And it gives a really nice effect, like waves like that. OK, so there's lots of ways you can use the sponge. You could do the dabbing to blend all the colours in together. Or you can really see the waves on this one. So I dab and twist, dab and twist. All right. And it's just another thing, another effect. If you don't want to do that and you want to continue dabbing a different colour, that's completely up to you. You don't even have to do waves if you don't want to. You could do cliffs or um, just keep going with the sunset. It's absolutely up to you. All right. Um, yeah. Um, I didn't show you my lighters for last time, but I made like a cliff for it in water. Oh, my God. That is so cool. Well done. That's really excellent. I love that. Will you, will you send me a photograph of that? Because I think that's super cool. That would be really cool to pop up on the virtual gallery. Well done. It really makes it, gives it a scene, doesn't it? Makes it look like... Um, was that from last week? That was from two weeks, three weeks ago, I think, wasn't it? The lighthouses, because we did our family I'm trees. Like, I'm using, there's a bit of extra pink cause from all of my colours on my sponge. So I'm kind of mixing all of those. 
colour is kind of at the bottom underneath the red. Amazing. That's going to be wonderful. It's going to look so cool. When you blend all the colours in together, it's going to be brilliant. Now, I'm finished painting mine. So you can kind of see from the dabbing and twisting at the end, I've left some white paper. But I think that looks nice because it looks like the waves, the crest of a wave. And this is going to be my picture ready to dry. So I'm going to pop mine to one side just to dry for a minute while you guys are catching up. What were you saying, Julie? Water felt like ocean water. You know how it has that white foam on the top? That's exactly it. That's the effect I'm going for, Julie. Well done. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now, as I said, guys, just when you're washing these sponges, Hello. be careful you don't get it all over your bathrooms. Hi, Ashling. Don't, don't get it all over your bathrooms and stuff. Just stay over the sink, okay? And then you can wipe the sink down after. It's like I'm cleaning my table now because it's covered in paint so I don't get it all over my next piece, all right? Um, so when you're using paints like that, if you, if you let it, the sponges dry, it's harder to get the paint off, okay? So straight after class into the bathroom and see if you can wash them off. Put some, uh, you don't need any soap or anything like that, just some water with a stopper in the sink and just squeeze it until all the color comes out, all right? And then let them dry on some kitchen roll or some toilet paper in the bathroom. Um, I suppose it's probably the, the best place to let something dry like that, isn't it? Cool, or you could put it outside in the sun, be beautiful. That's if it's nice where you are. It's lovely in Cork today. Okay, so where is my white paper gone? Um, do, 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 do. Next piece. Here and my black card is here. Fantastic. How are we getting on, guys, with your painting? Are we done with the painting part? Are we still working away on it? Most of you are done. Brilliant. Okay, cool. So when you are done, we're going to put it somewhere safe. Don't put it on a chair. I had one person this week put their painting on a chair and their poor dad sat down on the chair and got paint all over his bum on his pants. So that wasn't great. Uh, it was very funny, but it wasn't great. So, because it ruined and the picture. It was probably ruined. Exactly, Julie. The, the paper, was paper was ruined, so she had to start again. It was very funny, though. Um, so put it somewhere. No one's going to sit on it. Know? What? How do you know? Because she said, she, they, they all showed me. The dad showed me and everything on the video. It was quite funny. So, um, right. Put it on a windowsill or put it on. I, I normally put mine on my near my laptop because it's warm. You could put it on a radiator, put it at a window, somewhere that no one's going to be able to get at it, okay? When you're finished painting. So if you're catching up painting, that's fine too. Do we have to paint the whole page? You don't. No, no. You can paint as much as you want or as little as you like. Well done. That is brilliant, Emer. I love the use of colours. Well done, guys. Hello. Hi, Ashley. Right, so... While you're finishing off the painting, be thinking about what kind of a building or what kind of a creature or what kind of an image you want to make out of that black card, okay? I'm going to make another lighthouse. Um, but as I said, you can do anything you like. Here is a castle that I did, kind of a creepy castle. Um, and then I added to it. You can add to the picture after it's dry with your markers to add things like your seagulls or your bats or a cat or whatever you like. Um, here is one that my son did, uh, which Kean did, and it's a cherry blossom tree, and you can kind of see the little the little gaps in the sponges makes it look like there's light coming through the trees. And um, so it's anything you want. You could do an animal, a building, anything you like. I'm going to do um a lighthouse again. So if you want to do the same as me, that's cool. If you want to do your own, that's brilliant too. Okay, so if you're finished your painting, you can move on to your card. And you can get drawing, start drawing. Now, my hint for this is when you're doing windows or doors or anything you're going to cut out, make them big. Don't make them, don't be mean with the size of them. Make them big enough so when we're cutting them out, it's not a real struggle, okay? And you don't accidentally make a mess of it. So, nice big windows. And you can see nice big windows and doors if you're cutting things out. Don't do too many. You don't need too much, okay? And um, when you're drawing. If you're going to do... um. A drawing. This is why I was saying the pencil will come in handy because when you're drawing on black paper with pencil, it comes out like this. You can see, look, it comes out kind of a silver color, and that means it's easier to see when you're cutting out. If you don't have a pencil, that's okay too. It's just a little bit more difficult to see. Okay, it's just a little hint. Yes. Um. 
You okay, Stephen? Yeah, if you're done with the painting, you can just leave your paint somewhere to dry for a minute. And you can you could cover up the paints after class. It's not they're not going to be open that long or anything like that. Or your lovely assistant next to you can do the put all the pot covers on. All right, brilliant. So we're going to move on to our black card, and we're going to draw whatever we want on it and cut it out to stick on to our painting. So first, see if we just uh, draw whatever we like on this on this, and then I'll show you a knack on how to cut out the windows and doors. A trick that's really handy. Some of you will know it because you've been with me a long time. Other people won't know it so well. Well done. The painting is fabulous. That's brilliant. I love it. Well done. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a lighthouse. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the corner of the page and it's like drawing the bottom of a tree trunk on either side. Okay, so drawing something like this. You can kind of see it there in the light, my two lines. Okay, just kind of up at an angle is the first two things I'm going to do. Okay, Are you okay, Julie? You still working on the paint part? No. I'm taking a break. You're tired. I can see you're tired. It's been a long week. No, it's because for the whole day of school, I've had a headache and I didn't know where my bottle was until Aww. the very end of the day. So I felt sick and I'm still feeling sick. Oh, honey. Well, you can watch. You can catch up later another time, can't you? Okay. Yeah, you can watch it like a TV show. So we're going to go from the corner up at an angle on both sides. Look, and mine is not perfect. I can fix it when I'm cutting it out. I'm going to just draw a line across the top like that, like putting a hat on it. So a line across the top like this. Okay. And I'm going to make this into a small rectangle just by putting another line on top. And I'm giving it two sides like that. Okay. You can kind of see it there again. I'm trying to, trying to show you in the light, catch the light with the, uh, the pencil. Okay. So what I've done is two kind of diagonal lines, one to each side, a cap on the top and made it into a small rectangle, okay? Now, as I said, you don't have to do um, the lighthouse. You could do whatever you like, but this is just to give you an idea, okay? Now I'm going to draw a box, a square box on the top of all of that. So it kind of looks like it has a top hat on, okay? So I've gone two diagonal lines, one on each side, did a, um, a really skinny rectangle in the middle and then I did a box, a square box on top of that. Okay, well done, Lynn. Really good, well done. And the last thing I'm going to do here for the main part of the building is I'm gonna draw a triangle on the top of that, okay? So I'm gonna make the triangle a little bit bigger than the square, um, a little bit wider than the square, just to kind of stick it out to the side like this. All right, so that's my two diagonal lines my skinny rectangle, my square, and my triangle on the top, okay? So there we go. All right. Now comes, I'm done. well done, Louise. Now, when if you're done, you can start cutting it out, the main part. We're going to do the windows and the door um, on my lighthouse now, okay? I'm gonna do the door kind of halfway up because um, I want it to be kind of above the waves. Um, like it's on a cliff. So I did the door like this. Now that's kind of what I call a church door because it's kind of pointy. It's a gothic door because it's kind of pointy, but you could do any kind of door you like. And I'm going to do two big enough rectangles in here, which is the light box for the lighthouse. So they'll be easy enough to cut out as well. Okay, so I'm going to do two re big enough rectangles. So when it comes to cutting them out, it'll be easier than... Um, cutting out small ones and that's my lighthouse finished I'm finished drawing my lighthouse now all right and I kind of came halfway up with the door because when I stick it on I might like to do some rocks on this and um, to make it look like there's a big cliff here that it's sitting on top of all right so when you have your um lighthouse or your building or your animal drawn we're going to cut it out um around the edges okay now um i'm just going to cut along that silver line that i've done or whatever color you are doing it in um and what we can do is we have lots of this black card left over so if you want you can make um something to stick on out of the black card if you don't want to draw on your painting you can use the black card 
and make things like bats or cats or anything really ships in the distance and um, you could do like that actually another cool um, silhouette or picture to do in the black would be like a pirate ship or something so that would be another idea you could do and you could even do one in a smaller piece of black paper and stick it onto the one you have now what would be a good idea julie ballerina oh that would be a lovely idea actually yeah i used to do ballet did you yeah and what did you you gave up did you or was it yeah. because of the pandemic it's not on yeah it was on zoom and it was really tricky because it was the room i was doing it in and it was not big enough i know i t i teach ballet as well i teach ballet and I'm trying to do it in a tiny living room. And it's really hard for teachers too. So if that's any consolation, it was hard for the teachers too. It's much better in a, in a, in a studio. Now, I have all of this black card left. So I'm going to do maybe some cool stuff for this during the week. Or I might make some different things to stick on my picture today. Who knows? Um, and I've got the main part of my lighthouse cut out. Okay. How are you guys getting on? How are we getting on here? If we got our... You're cutting out your, your designs. Are we still drawing designs or are we cutting them out? Most people are cutting, yeah. And getting a load of these sim symbols. People are using their scissors to cut. Well done, guys. Okay, well done. Perfect. Now, a little trick. I'm just going to cut out my windows and my doors, okay? So a little trick to cut out something when it's in the center of, of a work of art or a piece of art, um, especially when you're making something like masks, um, I'm just going to bend my paper. Now, I'm not folding it. I'm bending it like this. You can kind of see. And I'm just going to do a little snip in the bend bit, which is in the center of my door here. You can kind of see that I've made a little slit here if I hold it closer to the camera. Okay. And with that slit, that means I can pop my scissors into that little hole that I've made and just cut around on the inside of the piece without kind of cutting along the edge and gluing things back together. It's a handy way to just cut something out when it's in the middle of something else. Now, obviously, the bigger you make the thing you're cutting out, the easier it is because the more space there is for the scissors. OK, so you can kind of see here I'm just cutting out now in the middle. Using the slit that I made, I'm going to do this again. So don't worry if you missed it. OK, so that's my door cut out there. OK, and I'm going to do that again for my windows up here. So don't worry if you missed it. I'm just going to bend my card a little bit and make a little snip in one of the windows. OK, so I made a little snip in here by bending it over, not folding. I'm just bending, popping my scissors into the little slit that I made. And I'm going to just move my scissors around as Press gently it. as I can. It, look like this in the end. it does. Yeah. Just and you cut out the windows. It looks uh, exactly like that with windows. So well done, Emer. That's well done. Really well done. Look, snap. You get the same, same shape. All right. So I've cut my door out just by bending the paper over and making a little slit. Now, if you need to get help with it, that's okay too, because these bits are really tricky. Um, and I'm just going to just be really gentle to try and be as neat as I can with these windows. Okay. So I've cut one window out now and one door. Okay, so the last time I'm going to show you now again, last time is how to make that little slit. I'm just bending my card over a little bit, making that little slit with my scissors and popping my scissors through that little hole to make the little gap big enough to put my scissors in and just to move my scissors around on the inside. This is such a cool little knack, but practice makes perfect, all right? So if you're making masks at Halloween or anything you want to cut out with windows or doors, like this is a really good way to do it. Okay, a little, little trick or a little knack. All right, so I've cut mine out now. So I've got my light box or the two little rectangles in the light box cut out. And I've got the door cut out as well. All right, well done. How are we getting on? Are we still cutting away like mad? Yep, brilliant. Well done, guys. Perfect. Oh, that's gorgeous, Emer. Well done. Really, really good. Fantastic. And we all doing lighthouses or are we doing different things? I want to do a black cat. You're going to do a black cat? Brilliant. What about you, Lynn? What are you doing? A lighthouse as well. 
Very cool. And there's a ballerina from someone. And Louise, what are you doing? <laughs> I was talking about you. I'd probably make a ballerina myself later. Stephen, what are you up to? What are you making? He's on, you're on mute. <laughs> what are you making, Stephen? I'm making a castle in the middle of the sea. Amazing. Really, really good. What about what about Anna and Neve? How are you guys getting on? Is Anna with you today or is it just Neve? Uh, it's just me, but um, I'm making a cherry blossom, but I'm going to put the little pink flowers on it with cotton buds. Oh my God, amazing. That's going to be really, really cool. Can't wait to see it. Well done. That's a lot of work there as well. And Louise, what are you got up to? What shape are you doing? Well done. That's brilliant. Really cool. Very, very nice. Okay, so Louise is flying ahead there as well. So I'm going to catch up with Louise now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my black shape onto my paper that I painted earlier. Now, if your paint isn't dry, that's OK. You can always stick it on later. But mine is nice and dry, so I'm going to stick mine on there now. And I'm just going to use loads and loads of glue like I normally do um, and just stick it on to my page. All right. Um, and you can continue decorating like I know Louise has done a lovely bat there as well. You can either stick and make shapes and stick them on out of the rest of your black card or you can use your black marker and um, which probably looks a bit better than other colors on the silhouette. That's a good idea. Yeah. And you can do whatever you like on it. It is a good idea. Um, so I'm going to just. I have a good idea. You have a good idea? <coughs> what? Yeah. What's your good idea? You could do a vampire. You could do a vampire. Yeah. It would be really cool for Halloween, wouldn't it? So um, what I'm going to do kind of the same effect as I did here earlier. Now you could use more paint if you want and paint onto the black card and make kind of a, a rock shape or you can use the silver of your pencil. That's what I'm going to do again on mine. Um, you don't have to do any kind of road or any kind of rock if you don't want to. This is just the fastest way I know of doing it. I'm going to make it a little, a little bit more dramatic to look at, I guess. And I'm just going to colour it in and um, colouring the path that I've drawn with my pencil and gives it that lovely silver effect and then I'm going to maybe do some more um what are they called seagulls in the air to really kind of finish off my one um but it's up to you I like when you're you know when you're being super creative I always say this about all my classes that you're super creative and the further we go into term the more the more creative you get because you get you more ideas and more and more ideas from each other so that's really cool so I'm going to keep going. I'm almost done with mine. I'm just going to do that silver bit at the side on mine. But you guys can take your time. As always, I have less time than you. And yours always end up looking lovely and neat uh, compared to mine. So <laughs> I'm going to be really rushing here to try and get mine done in time. So, okay, off I go to the side. There we go. So I've done the kind of silver effect here. It makes it look like uh, it's sitting on a rock. But you could paint with a paintbrush and add it to that as well if you want. And I'm going to draw some um, seagulls in the air as I well. I have a good tip if you're doing a castle. Do you? Go on, what's the tip? So, sometimes in the city close to where I live, mm -hmm. if we pass by a big, really tall round tower on a big mountain, Wow. And it stores really up high so that if someone comes to attack, no one would be able to get in the castle. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's a good idea to do the door halfway up. There were the monks, weren't they? The monks had a very clever idea. They used to hide all of their um, treasure up high, like that with the door, like you said, Julie. And then they'd pull up the ladder after them so people couldn't get at them. So that was clever. Right, so this is mine done. So you can see the splashes of the waves. You can see this, the twist and dab and twist effect. You can see that it's really blended in. All the colours have really blended in and dried really lovely together as well. Um, and the black really makes it look dramatic. And a lot of you will have ideas like this around Halloween as well to make them really dramatic looking, kind of scary and spooky looking. So these are my um, sponge painting silhouette drawings. Okay, so there's my castle. 
here's one of my um i was going to say windmill it's not a windmill it's a lighthouse angela um, and here is Kean's tree so there's lots of different ideas i'm dying to see yours uh, so make sure you take some photographs and send them in to me well done then that's beautiful the tree is stunning i can't wait to see what that looks like with your idea of doing the cotton wool as well well done guys um louise already showed me hers that's fantastic the castle i can't wait to see yours julie which are either your cat or your ballerina um, and well done everyone this week have a brilliant weekend and i will see you all next week okay bye guys Bye, Angela. Well Bye. done. That's gorgeous, Emer. Well done, guys. See you later. Bye.